are highlighting a very important issue after new research found that one in four people that suffer from an eating disorder are men. Yet due to stereotypes um, that marking eating disorders as a female issue, more than half of those men never get help and many don't even realise that they have one. Something that our guest today knows only too well. Opening up about his own experience, we're joined by broadcaster and my former co-presenter, Adrian Child. <laughs> Adrian, look, we, we can talk about these things a lot and it's just interesting and I'm, I'm guessing what you're about to say will resonate with so many people, men and women, mm -hmm. and it's just down to your basic relationship with food yeah. and the ability to know when to just stop. Well, uh, yeah, I've always been aware I was, I'm a inveterate overeater, but it, it's what focused it for me is that you know, when I was last came on here, it was to talk about the book I'd written about drinking. Yeah, the good and by the way, I'm very anxious not to come across as a complete basket case, because on that occasion, <laughs> I was talking about drinking too much and ADHD, and now I'm on talking about overeating. And oh, there, are, well. there are other ailments available too, <laughs> which I could go into. I've but, got most of them right. as well, so there you go. When I was talking about drinking, a lot, good company. what a lot of people would say to me is, oh, I've got no, I've got no off switch. Mm. I've got no, when I start drinking, I just can't stop. Now, though I was drinking far too much, I'm not quite like that. You know, when I've had enough, I've had enough. I'm not going to go keep going all night with drinking. But I thought, in the context of food, it's different there. I have got no off switch. And I'll just keep sort of going and going. And I start thinking, well, I mean, blokes particularly are generally quite happy, wrongly in a way, to, to just share about their drink and say, oh, I drink loads and loads and loads and I don't care. Mm. And I can't stop when I start. Mm. They don't mind sort of talking about that. But it's much rarer <laughs> to hear a bloke going, God, when I start eating, I just can't Give stop. Give us an example, Adrian. Like, I think you'd mentioned something about being on the train once when they came round. Yeah, I mean, that's... It, I mean, that, that's a good example. I mean, briefly, I... Because I was brought up, and I think a lot of us were that, that era, brought up, waste not, want not, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to be finish, seen, finish, finish, finish everything. Yeah. Their portions then, were smaller yeah. then. I mean, well, I was on a train to Manchester one morning. I'd just had some breakfast at home. I was on the train, and the guard bloke came past with a big tray of bacon and sausage baps. And he said, uh, and he said uh, do you want one? And I should have said no. I went, yeah, he said, which do you want? And I went, mm, I'll have both. I had two, bacon and sausage. Anyway, five minutes later, he comes... I eat those. Five minutes later, he comes back with a big tray, again, piled high, and he said, uh, do you want another one? I'm about to throw them away. You know, so at which point it was like... Part of my head, it was like he said he had some kittens and he said, I'm about to drown these, do you want one? I mean, it almost <laughs> felt like that. Yeah. And before I knew it, I'd had another three. So on top of breakfast, I'd had five baps mm. before I'd got to Stockport. I was... And it ruined the whole day. I, I was, was going to say, presumably, was, you knew as you were eating, cos I've been there, yeah. that you were going to feel terrible yeah. physically yes. and mentally cross yeah. with yourself. Oh, no, absolutely. I, you know, I was, I was hot. I was getting all sweaty, my stomach's gurgling, you know, I'm, mm. you know, um, you know, I, you know what kind of bodily noises <laughs> I might yeah, have been yeah, making. Yeah. And I was stuck in a radio studio, so I couldn't sort of, do you what know, needed to do. do what I needed to do. Yeah. My stomach was hurting, it was dreadful. So it's emotional and yeah. well, it's yeah. emotional, mental, isn't but, it? I mean, look, I can kind of deal with it, but it's kind of when I've got to, I've got to sort of think ahead and plan. Mm. It's when suddenly something becomes available mm -hmm. that I, I will start eating. Adrian, can I ask, is there sort of a correlation here? You know, like, do you feel like there are areas of your life where, you know, you, you, like you've, you can just said, you can't really put the brakes on? Have you ever considered I'm, things like therapy or yeah, anything yeah, like that? Yeah, no, but not for this. I feel, again, I don't want to be, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I'm going to be therapised for absolutely everything but, if, but if I'm not... not, if I'm not going, no, not necessarily. And I think, you know... You have know, you ever had therapy for anything? Yeah, no, I have, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think there's something... That there's something, cos I got, you know, diagnosed with ADHD, and I think there's something in that, you know, you mm. can get... I mean, you can get very stressed, you know, if you're not dealing with it properly, and that can lead to suddenly yeah. reaching for something to eat. Comfort. But a lot of it's a mystery to me. We talk about comfort eating. I mean, the one thing it doesn't bring you is any comfort. Is any comfort. Yeah. You know, and I, just... I can absolutely agree. And I had to have... I, I used to have exactly that, which mm. is, is a form of disordered eating. I felt myself that when I gave up alcohol, I replaced alcohol addiction with a potential food mm. addiction. Yeah. But I started working with this company, which is a sort of 
food replacement mm -hmm. company, but with that, it was the only one in the country using CBT, using mm -hmm. cognitive behavioural yeah. therapy, yeah. which helped to change my relationship with food. Because yeah. my tendency still is to want to eat till I am so full. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. why is it? Why are other people just happily mm -hmm. putting their their mm -hmm. knives and forks down? And I'm, but luckily, you know, I'm, I've still got that. But yeah. I now have the little tools yeah. that I but can it use. It can still ambush you, though. It can you ambush know, you. I think a lot of people might be thinking, why are you so slim? Well, I'm not. You know, I'm not particularly. But I suppose I've, I've sort of got it. I've, I've got it under control. But if I really let myself go and sort of give way to my urges, mm. I mean, it could be, it could be really ugly. And I, I think. I was just I was talking to your researcher Emily, and she was she, she we had a really good conversation, and it clarified some of my thinking. And I realised so something I do. I know I'm, I'm going to feel bad as soon as I stop eating whatever I'm eating. So I actually wonder if I'm not delaying the stopping eating. So keep eating, delaying the moment when I'm going to start feeling bad about it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So eat, 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 and just, just, also, just what, keep going. What fascinates me about that story is that you didn't know that the guy was going to come past with the trolley. No. So, for me, somebody with a compulsive overeating would arrive on the train with a bag... They wouldn't take that chance. They yeah. would have a bag of food but I didn't with them that... I was full. I just had breakfast at home, mm. you know, so... I mean, but what... what I mean is you're not... You're not planning ahead no. when you're next going to eat. No. That was a well, chance. I wasn't planning to eat on that train. I didn't need to eat. I just had my breakfast at home. What I needed to happen there... You couldn't say no when it happened. Could, well, what... If somebody had said to me, and this isn't going to happen, this is a fantasy, but said, uh, I, you know, like in the earpiece, like when we're at work, so, Adrian, just so you know, fella's coming with some free baps. Uh, he's coming through the door now, <laughs> just so you know, just so you want. Then, literally, I could be ready. And then yeah. he said again, you'll never guess what, he's coming back. He says he's going to throw him away. <laughs> he's going to throw him away if you don't have him. At which point, I need to go and lock myself in the toilet or something. <laughs> he's gone into a state of panic. And, and of course, it was, um, it was our Nadia that sort of first made yeah. her aware. Yeah. So. When the one the show first started, we piloted it in Birmingham for three or four weeks. And, uh, and it was the first time I'd met Nadia, and I talked to her a lot about it, and she was talking about going to uh, Overeaters to Anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah. And it was only talking to her that I realised I saw, I saw a lot of myself in her, and I could see, you know, someone sort of picking at food is a good sign that you've got it. You know, mm. we, you know what I'm... You know, do a lot of cooking, and often. You know, I was by just the time, say that, Adrian, know, you're such a great cook. By the time cook, I've but... cooked, by the time I've cooked, I've actually eaten probably the equivalent of a whole of meal, a meal before yeah. I've started just yeah. picking. Then at again, things, ADHD yeah. is a common denominator between me, you, and Nadia, yeah. of course. Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So we still yeah, don't know. Yeah. And so, do you think you link all of this together yeah, I mean, from that diagnosis? You know, really? I think, really yeah, I think it's. I think it's part of it, but it's you know. I, I don't know, I just need to look at more, you know, just look at more strategies. With, well, you the know, half the battle to... is knowing that... Is knowing. That it's there. Yeah. 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 And accepting that it's an issue and maybe yeah. not being embarrassed mm. to, to seek help just because you don't want another, another label. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true, but it's just, I don't know, it's just so difficult to get help without paying for it, which I'm not, you know, I've got, you know, I don't mind paying for it, but it's like a lot of mental health issues. We're telling people to talk to people, then, mm. yeah. you know, we're not... The no. NHS is difficult to get anyone well, you to can't talk get to. to. I, know, it's I mean, really everyone, real shame, everyone I know has been diagnosed with ADHD has basically paid for it. Now, yeah. knowing what I know now about I all am. the people who really need it, who are probably who are miserable and probably end up in prison, who might wait years... Or on years, a seven-year waiting yeah, list. Yeah, or on a seven-year waiting list. Look, I would donate my diagnosis, hypothetically, mm -hmm. if I could. You can have my medication, you can have it all, cos you need it more than me, cos it was making me miserable, but it's... It's existential for some people, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's, it's, it's almost life or death. Very true, very true. Adrian, thank you very much. Not um, at all. It was October we saw you last. Mm -hmm. When are you coming back again then to I talk to I us? I noticed, actually, there was no snacks in my dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> so I obviously thought... He likes know, a little moan, does he, Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, know. I, wanted to, I just wanted to talk about the fact that when you were on the show together that you never knew who you were interviewing half what, the time. What I, I just did. wondered if you well, thought no, that I was years odd. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I knew, but I'd forget. And, uh, <laughs> no, and half, halfway through, he'd say to me, I'm going to ask him this question next. And I went, that's not the person. <laughs> that I got mixed make up. Sense. I was interviewed. We had somebody on Sorry, who, who it, I thought was in an actor. He was, you uh, thought it was Doctor Who. I thought it was a bloke played Doctor Who. But I got David Tennant mixed up with, with David Morris. <laughs> I was just about to ask him about Daleks or something. And she said, Seriously. What are I'm you gonna, doing? I'm <laughs>
<laughs> Literally, we need a whole part just to talk about this, but we've run out of time, typically. Adrian, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Come back again, Adrian Charles. We're struggling with anything we have just spoken about. All the details you need are on the website.